Um, as we celebrate the life of a man uh, that we loved and, <clears throat> and left us with a lot of great memories. Uh, thank you, Bowden family, for allowing Hope to honor Coach Bowden through her gift of music and for me to share a few memories from my time with Coach B. Uh, on behalf of the Charlie Ward family, I would like to send our condolences uh, to Ms. Ann and the Bowden family as you mourn the transition, transitioning of Coach Bowden. I know Coach had prepared everyone for this time, but it's never easy to see them transition from earth to heaven. However, we know he is in a better place, but his legacy will live on through all of us that he has touched while here on earth. His why in life was to be an ambassador for Christ. And I will say that he succeeded at doing that. Along with being a great husband, father, great granddad, and granddad, and, a, and football coach that taught young men how to live with the purpose, he was a difference maker for the Jesus Christ team. Thank you for sharing your husband and your dad with us. I was blessed to have two loving parents that taught me the value of unconditional love, being prepared, pushing through adversity, and being patient for what God has for you. As we've heard it said before, that it takes a village to raise a child, and Coach Bowden was a village dad for me. I'm grateful that Coach Bowden listened to Coach McDuffie while he stood on the top of the table to convince Coach to give me a chance to play quarterback at Florida State. Coach B continued to teach me the life lessons of the value of Christian love, being prepared, pushing through adversity, and being patient for what God has for you. Those lessons have stuck with me and also helped shape me into the man I am today. I'd like to share three Ps that made an impact on me. The first one is preparation. Coach Baum prepared me to be bold in my faith by making Jesus Christ a priority in his own life and letting everyone know that Jesus wants them to be on his team. He made it his business to surround his players with men that had the same mindset that he had and allowed them to make their own impact for Jesus Christ on the young men they coached. All of his coaches embodied his spirit to serve Christ and prepare us for the futures by the way they live their lives on a daily basis. However, there were a few coaches that he had to call into his office to let them know that their words weren't pleasing to the Lord. Uh, and, and you all know who I'm talking about. He prepared me through my experience as a freshman punter that everything we do has a purpose and to be ready to make adjustments to your plan. He didn't tell me that I was going to compete for the punting job because I was recruited to be a quarterback, but that taught me a valuable lesson to be prepared for anything. Winning the punting job prepared me to know that being a team player comes in different ways and being selfless wins in the end. He prepared us for the game of life. Every Friday night devotional, was always classic and Bible-based. He prepared me to be bold in my faith as he took us to two churches, as Bobby, Bob, um, as, uh, Bobby mentioned earlier. He took us to two churches uh, during the preseason each and every day, I mean each and every uh, summer, which only Coach B can do because he was open and bold in his faith. Church and state, Coach was like, whatever. I'm just going to get it done because this is what God has called me to do. He prepared me to see what humility looks like as a leader. My junior year, he gave up the play calling duties to Coach Rick and Coach Scott, which took some humility because he had been very successful with the offense. I had been groomed to run for three years, but his willingness to do what is best for the team was always on display with his selfless acts. That showed me that he trusted his coaches to put our offense in the best situations so that we could use our talent differently. I'm grateful for his Christ-like attitude. The second P is perseverance. Coach Bowden showed me how to persevere through adversity. He was about to kill me if I threw one more interception 
in that Clemson game. <laughs> no. uh, adversity was something he helped me to overcome because he supported me when I was throwing the football to the wrong team a lot my junior season. Yes, he had his doubts during that time, but I'm grateful he allowed me to fail and come back to redeem myself. He had the faith in me to keep pushing me forward, but reminded me in that Clemson game that we were wearing white, not orange. <laughs> Coach Bauer gave us lifelong friendships. He encouraged me to room with Warwick Dunn after he tragically lost his mother during his senior year of high school. I learned a lot from Warwick. My faith grew stronger as I watched and listened to him talk about his, talk about his family and what his mom meant to him. Warwick taught me not to give up when things got tough and it was okay to lean on others. Whenever you needed someone to talk to, Coach Bowden was always there. The third P is patience. Coach Bowden taught me to be patient while I wait for my chance to play quarterback. He made this statement during my recruit, recruitment to FSU. I'm sure Bobby, Dion, Tracy, Sanders heard this as well. If you want to play quarterback, then you will have to wait your turn. How many of us like to wait on stuff that we want? He said, wait your turn. That's what he told me. And I was like, all right, coach, I'll wait my time. Those words were shared with my parents and me during my recruitment to FSU. I was a little concerned, though, after I won the punting job my freshman year, that if I was going to have to wait my time. He taught me that waiting for what you want doesn't mean you can get better. You can't get better while you wait. I was grateful he gave me a chance to play basketball while I was waiting, which helped me to gain some valuable experience while I was waiting my turn to play QB. I am grateful for Coach Bowden because he held to his word of allowing me to play football and basketball while getting my degree. I will forever remember the life lessons that Coach B taught me during my time as a student athlete and a high school coach. He may be dancing in heaven, but his legacy will carry on through everyone he touched. As I conclude, Coach Bowden, thanks for all the memories you and I shared while you were living. I love you, and I will see you one day in heaven. Rejoice in heaven. I'd like to leave you with this scripture. This is my life scripture. It's found in Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, whatever your task may be, work from the soul, that is, put in your very best effort, which he taught us to do, as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men, that you receive the inheritance, which is your greatest reward. It is the Lord Christ whom you actually serve. Coach B has gotten his inheritance. May God continue to bless you and condolences to the Bion family. Uh, as as uh, Charlie said, uh, us linebackers are used to making adjustments uh, on the go. Uh, whether it's covering for Deion Sanders, my good friend, or uh, coming up out of Charlie Ward. How about that? But first of all, my condolences for my family to Miss Ann, all the coaches, uh, Bowers in the family, uh, our condolences go out to you guys. And I stand here today to honor Coach the best I can. But before I get to the things that I want to say, I was definitely sent instructions by my good friend, Mr. Sanders. Uh, if he was standing here today, he just simply wanted to share with you guys and everybody how Coach Bowden came into his life. And he needed a man in his life, a godly man. He said Coach Bowden came into his life as he called us celebrity because he was one of the very few coaches he saw on TV. And he didn't understand how celebrity would come to his little old high school in Fort Myers, Florida to recruit him. And he said as Coach Bowden gave him belief when he got here to Florida State, uh, belief in working hard, the belief to believe in himself that he can accomplish anything. 
And as I talked with Dion, he, he said Coach Bowden just gave him a godly man that he saw how you could live through Christ every single day and be the best at what you do. And he says through that hard work and through that belief as he was building our program that they had the confidence to go into anyone's house and not only win a game, but win it convincingly. So he said he looked forward to spending time with you guys tomorrow, but he definitely uh, wanted to share those few words. Uh, so Dion, if you're watching, I did my job. <laughs> now, what Coach Bowden means to me, I think about uh, the three Fs. He said, the only time I'd ever make three Fs in life and have a passing grade is faith, family, and football, in that order. And as I reflect over my relationship with Coach Bowden since 1990, that's what it stands for for me. Uh, as you heard from Bobby as well as Charlie, Coach Bowden outwardly lived his faith. Whether it was taking our team to churches, non-denominational churches, through the preseason, through our Friday night chapel services, where he would take one element of the game and talk to just us players. He was setting a foundation in our life to be men of character. But I must tell you that faith was tested. It's probably one of my favorite Coach Bowden stories. Uh, my freshman year, uh, called into his office, uh, doing bowl practice, and I'd never been called into Coach Bowden's office before, so I was a little nervous. And, you know, as a freshman, us players know as soon as I got to the locker room, we're going in and get ready to dress, and here comes Mr. Callaway. You know, as a freshman, Mr. Callaway never knew your name. He just called you by your number. He said, number 10, Coach Bowden wants to see you. Don't get dressed. You go right on up there and see him right now. I said, I don't know what I did. He said, I don't know either, but you better get up those stairs. <laughs> so I go up, and I'm really nervous, and then I see Miss Sue. And everyone know how sweet she is, and she's like, sugar, Coach Bowden wants to see you. I said, Miss Sue, I don't know what I did. She said, I don't know, but it'll be all right, sister. Just go on in. It'll be OK. And, she, and I was nervous because Miss Sue then, she, she kissed me on my forehead. And I was like, oh, boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so as I went in, I started looking at Miss Sue leaving. I'm thinking, boy, I want to be right with her. Coach sits back, and, and he, he says, Derek, I'm disappointed in you. He said, you're not living up to your potential. He said, you're better than what you're showing, and I'm not going to stand for that. And I'm thinking in my mind, man, there's nothing I've done, because if I'd have done something wrong, Coach Andrews would have had me running gases, stadiums. Coach Burnham would have had me doing something. I know I didn't do anything wrong. So I say, Coach, excuse me. I say, this, I'm Derek Brooks, number 10. You sure you got the right one? <laughs> <laughs> and Coach looked and he said, absolutely. And he hands me my transcript from my first semester. And it's a big circle around the grade C. And I made a C in a biology class. And Coach, he looks and he said, Derek, you've never made a C in your life. From elementary to middle school to high school. And you get here and you wasn't here four months and you made a C. Not going to stand for that. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice. She says, Coach, he made what? She said, Derek, you better bleep, 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 bleep. I'm going to come up there and whoop your bleep, bleep, bleep and put my foot in your bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> Little did I know, Coach Bout had my mom on the speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> But little did he know that he was going to hear that type of language. <laughs> so, so Coach Bowden, he sits up and he said, Miss Brooks, we got it. I got it from here. I got it from here. <laughs> Man, he, he hung that phone up and he said, oh my God, Derek. He said, you better get it together. <laughs> he said, that government, I don't want her coming down here to put whoop your butt and mine at the same time. So, so you better figure this out. So from that moment there, it just made me fall in love with him because he made that commitment to my parents sitting in our front room in Pensacola, Florida, that he would not let me 
do anything below my potential. It had nothing to do about what I was doing on the football field. It was all about what I was doing in the classroom, and he wanted me to be the best. And I'm glad to sit here and tell you that my mom only came to Tallahassee for games. She did not have to come down here for any academic reasons. So when I think of faith family football, it's a faith that he lived throughout us every single day. When I think of family, it's how he showed us how he loved on his family. He showed us how he did that with the coaches, where there was the Thursday night dinners where the coaches' families came and ate with our team, and we had a chance to tell all the coaches' wives how bad they was treating us. <laughs> but it was the love of having our family around after the games and being there for us. And then the football part. Yes, we worked hard on the field. And he showed us how we competed in practice. That's the best competition possible. If we did those three things, we'll never fail in life. And it went on to my post career, and I had the pleasure of staying here in the state of Florida and staying connected through Coach Bout all these years. And he always built and always challenged me to keep doing the things I was doing to change life and be a man, a man of character. And as I close today, I just want to say we all could do that. We all could honor Coach Bowden as the legend he is, but more importantly, build into the legacy of how we live our lives. And that carried on all the way into about two and a half weeks, his last words to me. And I was fortunate that he had the strength to talk to me. And he said these words that I want to share with you. He simply said, Derek, if God give me 10 minutes or 10 years, I'm at peace. He said, but more importantly, I want you to continue changing lives in the community. And Dad Gummit, make sure you keep hugging your babies. And that's what I'm going to do. So guys, thank you. Coach, I love you. Rest in peace. Go Knowles.